Hi, welcome to the video. The Beast Car story is getting even more exciting now because I'm now down to the last few days before the Rossa Round 3 competition uh, where I've got to get the chassis together, build the body and bring the Beast Car to life. So I'm looking forward to showing you that in, in this video. It's Bank Holiday Monday. I'm in my garage and I'm starting to build the Beast Car. Um, I've got a few parts still to make. I'm starting off the day actually by making sure the motors are in tip-top condition before I install them because once they're installed it's going to be a bit of a pain to get them out again. These motors are really nice quality but I did find they needed shimming to minimise the end float which I thought I needed to do for using them on the car. Also I found on one of them the bearings felt a little bit rough out of the box so I replaced them. Um, unfortunately it didn't seem to make any difference they they still felt the same so um, I decided to leave leave them at that also for my car application I had to reduce the length of the shaft by three millimeters so it would fit within the body um, it was a bit too little amount to hacksaw off so the angle grinder came out um, I made sure to cover the motor in plastic to stop any bits of metal going into it it actually gave quite a clean finish. Um, you can see here it's pretty smooth. And once I took the nut off, it took off any little edges there, along with a bit of filing. Right, I'm on to the next stage of the build. So I'm going to be drilling the holes I need in these aluminium sections that, that I bought. I bought these ready cut to length, and as far as I can, as accurately as I can measure them, they're the exact length that I asked for. So four thirty millimeter long they are. Um, so don't need to do anything else other than just put all the holes in that are needed. I've got all those on a on a drawing to help me, and I've also 3D printed these these guides. So these will locate on the edge, and then uh, then I can use that to centre punch the holes before I drill them, uh, which I find is quite a efficient way of setting the positions and accurate. This shows how I use those templates. So you get it in position, and then it's easy to. Use the centre punch to mark your hole positions very accurately. I then drilled the first couple of holes in these side rails, bolted them together, and then I could drill through both of them in, in one go, so saving a bit of drilling time there. Here's an exciting moment. Um, I'm just about to start putting some parts onto the chassis for the first time. It's not for the final build, but just to check the fit up and make sure I drill the holes in place for my rails over there because they, they actually sandwich these spring plates. So depending on how wide these are, it might actually vary where the holes need to be slightly. Um, but I just want to check and make sure before I drill. You know the saying, measure twice, cut once. So now I've got the chassis assembled with um, the suspension units front and rear. You can see the problem that I'd have if it wasn't for my battery rail arrangement, which, which is that the wheels bolt basically bolt onto the side of these springs, and these can move quite a bit. And so you know you might have a situation where the front and the rear wheels aren't in line. But what I'm going to do is have a piece either side of that that keeps all that in line. I'm just going to set it up now and then I'll show you how it, how it works. Right, so I've got my two battery rails uh, loosely attached just with these crossbars. These are just used temporarily in the build to get everything in line. So I've purposefully pushed it as far out of line as I can. So as I tighten this up, theoretically it should... Oh yeah, you could see that. It straightened it up. So that, I think, that proves my idea is working. So next thing is I'm, I'm going to flip this over because it's all clamped together now. And I can check my hole positions along here. And I can see that one and that one look really good. That one and that one less so. So, yeah. Going well. Just about stopped for, to have some lunch and thought I'd offer up the batteries in there and they fit a treat. So the four 6S LiPos in there 
uh, and here's my top plate and you can see that I've cunningly done it so that it fits around where the wires go um, and it's going to bolt down into threaded holes in the edges of these side pieces which look like they line up really well so it's going the build's going well long may that continue Well, a few hours of drilling and making stuff later, and I'm finally ready to start the build. Um, I've got the bits laid out here. Have a look at this. So there's there's the four motors there with the four little subframes. Um, all the aluminium section bits cut up and ready to use. And then the amazing chassis that's been made for me. Battery strap, bulkheads, and springs and spacer parts um, I'm gonna start by peeling this protective layer off the chassis which probably will be quite satisfying here we go Let's see if I can get a I'm gonna take the inside off at the start of the build because all the components are gonna go on that side and then at the very end I'm gonna peel off the uh, peel off the underside um, I'll say the very end when I've got the rolling chassis together Oh yeah, look at that. This is well worth filming, I think. <laughs> it's nearly as satisfying as putting a protective uh, screen cover on a phone. You know, the glass layer that you put on. I, yeah, I like that. Anyway. There you go. Wow, that's what 700 millimeters of carbon looks like. I hate to think what a piece this big would cost in the UK. Anyway, on with the build. have it all the wheels on the only thing left to do now is to peel off the uh, peel off this um, protective layer underneath because I've bolted on pretty much everything now so I feel the time has come so satisfying which end's nearest the camera? That's the rear. So I'll just flip it around and we'll get it on the wheels. Wow, it's so heavy. Clear a big space for this. Right, here we go. There we have it. On its wheels for the first time. See how the suspension works? It is 
quite stiff as planned but it's got some some give there and it's got a bit of rake as well which is which is as planned brilliant well there you have it the beast is born I've got a couple of parts here printed on my 3D printers so this is the front bodywork section printed on, printed on my Bamboo Lab A1 in PLA uh, and then on the A1 Mini I've got one of my uh, sort of body protecting slider pieces uh, this is being printed in PTG for toughness basically just in case this part's just in case the car gets flipped over and the idea is to give a bit of protection to some of the wiring and that on the car in case the body gets ripped off the thing. Here's one I printed earlier. So it's quite lightweight but that would be incredibly strong. Um, and you can see the quality of the parts that I get out of this printer. So this is one of the canards. Um, and it's lovely and smooth. It's not quite, it is transparent PETG, but it's not come out quite see through. But uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Yeah, and this is looking like it's coming out great as well. So let, let's see the finished part soon. Here's the rear middle section of the beast body shell being printed on my, my larger 3D printer, Arturi Sidewider X1. It's a bit slower than the Bamboo Lab A1, um, well quite a lot slower, but it's got a huge capacity, 300 by 300 print bed and 400 millimeter height, which I actually need for this bit of body shell. This is probably the largest thing I've printed on this printer. I've, uh, I've used the height before, but not the whole build plate and the height, which I'm using with this part. Um, this has already been going for nearly 13 hours but it's nearly there now it's got about 30 millimeters left to go here I am offering up the bits of the beast body shell to the to the chassis as I print them so the first two bits are there and the last bit at the moment just waiting for that rear middle bit to be done currently printing at the moment excuse the absolute mess in my garage it is looking awesome. I'm actually making two bodies. I'm making a standard one and also a high downforce variant. So that will give me a couple of options to test when I go to Rossa and also a spare in case of any bad accidents. Here's the finished set of parts. That's 45 hours of print time you see there and 1.25 kilograms of plastic. This time in two weeks I'll be at the Rosser event round three of 2024 um, and I've still got quite a bit to do to finish my car off as you can see the the body shell is still not quite finished uh, the cars there is a rolling chassis but it's got no electronics in it yet apart from the motors so I've got all that to finish off but I've, with the two weeks that I've got I think I can do it so here we are about to glue the middle body segments together I've carefully smoothed off the edges already and um, got these small carbon rods to sort of guide the two bits together and I'm using this epoxy adhesive so let's see how this works for me
just been peeling the masking off my gluing attempt uh, and it's looking quite good actually uh, I was thinking of reinforcing the joints with fiberglass but if, all, if I can get all of them as good as this then I don't think I'm going to bother because fiberglass and it would end up being quite messy I think I've got to, I'd have to buy a load of extra stuff to do it so if I can avoid it that'll be better Hi, back again. I'm just going to get this uh, front of the car glued on. Uh, I've done the rear. That's looking good. Um, so yeah, let's get mixed up and get gluing here. you enjoy part one of the build there um, I'm going to be back next week with part two which is going to see the beast car get turned on for the first time and get put on its wheels and run for the first time also you're going to see how the body shell ended up after it was painted and, and completely finished off um, so join me next week for that one and if you enjoyed this one please like subscribe and or send me a comment if, if you like and, and let me know how you, how you found it so thanks for watching